Hello and welcome, I'm Impact Frames and in this video we are going to install Ubaboga for Linux with WSL. So all we need to do is follow these instructions here, these commands. And basically I'm just going to copy them and go into my terminal, which is this thing. You just launch it with this little penguin here. Come in here and paste this stuff. And yeah, just start it. Okay, in here you just select A and it will download the things for NVIDIA. Like all the CUDA packages and all that stuff. Okay, yes, yeah, so after all that finished, you have this link so you can open it by control clicking on it and here it is in our machine we don't have any mold yet so we need to download one so let's go and download it by clicking this and you can see here that it will start downloading so i will come back when that finish awesome to continue with the video we can just start this cmd flags and we can edit it so everything that we edit here it will be like a presetting and Uba Booga will, will start with these settings so we can tell the mold that we want to load to load a particular mold you can come into molds and select the mold that you have downloaded get the folder name copy it and go into that text file and edit it here paste it awesome and the next thing will be the flag for the loader. I'm gonna use X Llama Hogging Face. This is the recommended one for Llama models. Then you have the flag for chat. So this will start Ubabuga in chat mode. No stream means like the tokens will appear all at once in the screen. They won't appear like one by one, letter by letter. And then we have the flag for the extensions. The extensions is similar. You can come into text generation, extensions, and get the name of the folder to load that extension. So as you can see here, I got SDAPI, Whisper STT, 11 last TTS. And the last ones are for consuming the API. For example, if you are using my, my script, my extension for Stable Diffusion, you can use API Listen Port 7861. And that will the other program that Ubabuga is running in this port and it will communicate with it. So awesome, we can go here in the thing, back into Linux, yes, and we have the Xtar Linux SH. If you are using Windows, it's exactly the same. You have the names Windows.bat, but it's exactly the same. So you will, you can double click it. So it's even easier. For Linux, I just going to start this and get my Linux terminal. And I'm going to move into Ubabuga and then start Linux SH. And if you pay attention to, to the file, it will be the same as here. See, so it's taking Orca Mini V27B. And it's loading the, the extensions that I select. And then I have this link. I control click on it. And it, it brings me to, to Explorer, right? So 127. Normally, if it appears 00, zero it's not given the local host, so I put the local host and bang, it's loading there perfect. Then you have the text generation. There are four tabs uh, here. There are a couple, this text generation tab. You have an input here where you can write hello. You can write your message to the thing. Okay, it's also using 11 labs, but I don't have the API. Uh, so I can just unselect this. You can use Silero TTS, which is free. It's another TTS here in the extensions. Uh, if you go into extensions, you can use Silero TTS. It's free and it's super good. 
If not, you can get the API key from 11 Labs and sign up for it and you can get it. And gallery, you can use a character from the gallery. I'm going to use the example here. And if you want to see it, you can move into chat mode and also you can select how these things are displayed. For example, now it's displaying this way, but I have a different display like this. And to make this display like that, you can go into you can go into the Ubabuga folder has a CSS folder. And in here you can edit one of these CSS files and have like your custom Ubabuga UI. Also, you can use the settings here to have your custom settings each time you start Ubabuga. And in the cache file, you can see like I have a picture here which is loading for this. See? So that's how I do it. The SD API pictures, you need to be running Stable Diffusion to see it. So Stable Diffusion will load in 7860. And with this, you can send pictures and stuff. You can make pictures with the AI here. With this one, you can record things. So for example, I can ask Chiharu, what, which is your favorite movie? Okay, and hopefully she will reply, happy to help with anything you need related to computer hardware and software. So maybe my microphone is not picking up. I have an error, maybe it's my microphone. Uh, no. Yeah, something is gone wrong with my mic here, but normally this is how you work. You basically speak to it and it will reply. In the chat settings, you can change your name here, maybe. And you can load characters like you do in the gallery. You can load uh, Delia, perhaps. It's here, and once you are in here, it's Delia here. Cool. The instruction template, um, basically it picks the right instruction for the all. You can see like it's Orca Mini, so it selects Orca Mini here. So you don't have to worry about that. The chat history, when you have a long history with the character, a long conversation, you can save it in, in a folder here, and then you can reload it back. You can also blow the character here instead of dropping it into your character folder. So it's super easy. You can upload the picture too and submit. The parameters are super easy too. So basically you have some presettings here. And basically you have the temperature. If you want to be like deterministic, you can uh, lower this uh, coefficient here. Or if you want it to be like uh, really wild, you can go up to two. But a good setting is between 0 0.7 and 1.2. And that's creative enough for this. Also with the top P and top K is similar. If you go like to a higher value, it will compute more time, but it will be like a more creative response. And if you go to a lower value, it will be more coherent. So that's how these things work. There is a more explanation here with the Transformers documentation. And there is also a little tune, like a synthesis of what this does, each thing here. The repetition penalty, basically, if you don't want to see a token twice in your thing, you can opt this thing and this will prevent the tokens to repeat into the replies. You can make a longer reply with more things. If you are making a, a story, maybe you want to have 2K uh, tokens for a reply. It depends, on, but it takes more time to compute. So 200 is okay for me normally. In here, you can also put more context. 1496, it will take more context into consideration. The numbers of beans, these take more time to compute because basically it performs a non-greedy search for the tokens that, that is replying. 
and it's looking more probabilities in the tokens that it will come out into the response. So basically, I recommend to put it in one because it's like it consumes more time, more resources for what you are doing. I don't know if more time, but definitely more compute. And I think more time also. You can use early stopping and, and you can also ban the end of sentence token from the model if you don't want it to stop generating prematurely. And there are like self-explanatory things like explaining this. You mainly you don't even need to mess with this stuff if you are not an advanced user. You probably can go with simple or with something like divine intellect and I have three settings here as I told you it has less top P and yeah so you can do those things uh, let's go into the mall tab in the mall tab you can save the settings here if you are loading llama malls uh, the llama 2 malls are 4k there are some malls that are 8k so you can up this thing and every time that you have 2048 so for example there are two 2048s here, so you can put two here. And if you use compressed position embedding here, don't use the alpha value then because they only take one of these. It takes one or the other, but no both. So you can select only one. And in here, you can select like the different type of uh, mode that you are loading. For example, if you are loading a CPU mode, the Lama CPP is better or you can use the Lama CPP hogging face. This is a new one here. Uh, Auto GPTQ is also another way that you can load uh, GPTQ modes. So basically those are for modes like Pygmalion and other modes like those that are not Lama. For Lama, it's better to use Xlama or Lama hogging face. There are also modes that are for transformer types so you can load moles that are not either llama or they are just transformer moles we can go here and stay in the x llama thing you can load the loras if you have a particular lora you can apply the lora and in here you can go into things like the block and get your model like for example if you can see ggml folder here, this is like a CPU mode that you load with Lama CPP. And GPTQ modes are for the GPU. So it's very self-explanatory. If you have 7 billion parameter mode, like you can see here, there is a 70 billion parameter mode like here. This one will load in my computer because I don't have the graphic uh, power for this. So in my computer, the, I can load up to 30 billion, but this is too much. So for me, 13 billion is like the, the best quality for me because it's uh, fast and yeah. So basically the moles take one, 1 1.2, 1.5 times of the space of the mold. For example, if we go here into into this 3 billion parameter mode and we look into the file version the mode take 1.82 gigabytes this 3 billion parameter this will take about uh, 3 gig of ram in your graphic card so it takes 1.2 1.5 times we are here with the dolphin llama 7b and this one is 4 gig of RAM, right? It says it takes 4 gig of space. That's about 6 gig in the graphic card. So to load a 7 billion parameter mode, you, you need at least 6 gig of, of RAM in the graphic card to load it. And that's like a rule of thumb for loading the mode. So I think we are getting to the end of the video. Said we have sessions right in sessions you can select also like another type of, of way to load you can load in notebook and you can load different things here per session like you can load another extension that you have installed and maybe we can apply this and restore and you can see all the things happening here is downloading 
something that we need for Silero. Okay, and this is the notebook way of interacting with this mode. In which you can put it marked down and select your microphone and your Silero thing. Okay, so that was all for this video. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching.